Hey everyone, my name is John Todd, and welcome back to SIS Film Breakdowns. This next episode in our post-draft video series will cover Dallas Cowboys third-round draft pick Neville Gallimore. A Canadian native and son of Jamaican immigrants, Gallimore was a fifth-year senior defensive lineman for the Sooners, who played in 46 career games. He's a fascinating evaluation with a sky-high ceiling, based on his explosion, athleticism, and motor for an interior defensive player. He was one of the steals of the draft in our opinion, so let's see what the Cowboys are getting. At the Senior Bowl and Combine, Gallimore came in at 6 foot 2, 304 pounds. He posted a ridiculous 4.79 40-yard dash, one of only three defensive linemen since 2006 to run faster than 4.8, while also putting up 23 bench reps. His 7.97 three cone was disappointing because his film and pedigree show otherwise. On Bruce Feldman's annual list of the top 50 freaks in college football last year, Gallimore came in at number two. We're going to watch some clips from two games against Texas the past couple years and his 2019 games against Houston and Iowa State. To kick things off, let's watch a play at full speed to get a sense of the relentless motor Gallimore plays with in real time. He fires off the snap outside, working within one of Oklahoma's frequent twists up front, and ends up somehow jerking down Texas' left tackle with just one hand right there. Then loses and regains his balance and sprints after the quarterback for a hurry. He's a maniac in pursuit, and a guy his size moving like that is an imposing sight for an offense. Slowing things down now, we can see him lined up at nose and get serious depth to his rush against the center, forcing the back to come over to chip to help, and flushing the quarterback left, where he pursues after with that great speed to stay involved. These two Houston plays here show some success with his favorite swim move that he uses too often and tends to make predictable. He'll need to vary up his rush plan moving forward to keep blockers guessing, but they work enough on these reps with his quick hands and shiftiness, as he again gets great depth up the middle, forces a hold here, and still finishes the play with a bit of a late shot to the quarterback. Now, let's see how that effort translates to the run game. Gallimore lines up as a three-tech over the left guard, and we're going to get a shotgun toss sweep to the boundary away from him. Off the snap, he reads it quickly and easily beats his blocker trying to reach him with that quickness up top before turning on the Jets and nearly making the play outside the numbers. His speed and motor give him great range for plays outside the box. We'll watch both angles of this next play and again show where he starts and where he'll finish out to the numbers on the opposite side. He slants inside and sifts his way through the trash to find himself unblocked on the other side of the line, where he then pursues and makes the tackle, denying a cutback from the ball carrier. From the end zone angle, again he's that backside three tech who has no business making this play, but he finds a way. It's a huge asset for defensive coordinators to know your interior players aren't erased from the play on outside designs. You don't normally think of a 300 pound interior lineman leading a playoff program's pass rush, as opposed to some five star lanky edge rusher or third down specialist. But that's just what Gallimore did last year. He led the entire Oklahoma Sooners defense in total pressures in 2019, as well as pressures on third downs and even tied for second in pressures in the fourth quarter in overtime. I first noticed him his sophomore year making plays in garbage time, and that relentless attitude has carried on with him even as he's become a star. So we've established Gallimore can make flashy plays on the ball all over the field, and he'll have an NFL role on passing downs. But let's dive into more of what he can and can't bring in the run game. His first play is a zone off tackle run to his left, and he feels the zone steps from the interior line right away. He's so quick with his hands to win up top, as we've seen on these last few clips, and he again shrugs off the center and puts himself in an awkward position for the guard to block. It's not a flashy play, but it's impactful, and every rep matters. He doesn't get a tally in the stat sheet on this one, but Galmore made this run stuff happen with his ability to cause traffic with his quickness. Play number two is again that backside three tech on a run away from him. He consistently does a great job of getting skinny between these zone blocks, and that momentum and explosion of contact lets him drive the backside tackle right into the running back's cutback. Look at his eyes right there. I love the phrase disruption is still production, and Gallimore proved that, ranking second amongst the defensive tackles in the SIS rookie handbook in forced bounce rate. These last few plays, though, were great examples of why he's an exciting prospect and also why he fell to the third round. Here we have a goal line situation with Gallimore shaded in the A game. He times a snap perfectly and absolutely blows up the center. While the other two D linemen are still at the line, he's five yards in the backfield. Great, right? But he doesn't read the run and impact the play at all, highlighting his gap discipline as an area he'll need to develop. 
Too often, he'll knife into a backfield like this with his head down or get washed out on zone runs where his front slants the same way. He needs to learn to sit and anchor better from a mental and physical standpoint. These next two plays are consecutive from the Big Ten Championship in 2018 and will again show off his great snap quickness and perfect form into contact. I love the flat back and extension up top with a strong base. Then the double team comes, knocking him way off balance to a point he can't sit and recover, and the back finds a huge hole right through him. Next play is the same thing. Great leverage through contact, really stacks the center beautifully, but the guard gets a big shot on those exposed ribs and he wavers. Not that he could have done much on this play anyway, but the point stands. If he's going to be used as a two-gapper, he'll need to improve his core strength and ability to anchor along the interior to keep those gap assignments. When we combine all those other great traits we've talked about, his leverage and form to contact, upper body strength, pure power, they can help him overcome the occasional double team. Shaded as a two-eye here, he knows he might get help inside, but he attacks the guard first, gets his hands into his chest, presses up with his right arm, fends off the center because his base is sound, and just ragdolls his blocker into a solo stuff. Just a beautiful job, beautiful rep, and a flash of what he's capable of on rundowns. Despite having two different defensive coordinators, Neville Gallimore was deployed in eerily identical alignments the past two years. And to me, those splits should be flipped. He's not a nose tackle, and he's at his best when he has space to work and can see few of those double teams inside. As mentioned earlier, Oklahoma twisted and snutted their front a ton, which led to some great plays knifing against the grain and others where he'd be totally ran out laterally. While he was a team player and worked well in those designs, his skill set is an explosive upfield disruptor who should be attacking north-south more often than looping as a decoy on passing plays or trying to stalemate as a nose tackle on early downs. The Cowboys hopefully see his potential as a high-motor one-gapper and let him do what he does best while he rounds out his game in other areas. Thanks for watching this latest episode of SAS Film Breakdowns. Make sure to still check out the SIS Football Rookie Handbook for all the answers on who your favorite team drafted. Register for a free trial of the SIS Data Hub for all these stats and more. And don't forget to tune into the Off the Charts Football Podcast. Until next time, I'm John Todd.